Okay, in this video we're going to use these 12 linear visual patterns to develop some techniques for determining the algebraic expression, also sometimes called the general term for these linear patterns. So ideally you would have your students in groups and each group would get one of these visual patterns. You can download the template for these visual patterns with the link in the description. So once your students have these patterns, I'm gonna go through what each group of students should do with their particular pattern. So these instructions will be the same for all the sets. We'll show them for each set, but we'll describe them in a little bit more detail for set one. So once each group of students has their pattern, we want them to use color tiles, whether they be virtual or real, or some other type of manipulative. And we want them to represent these three terms plus the next two terms in the pattern using a different color to represent how the pattern changes each time. So let's see how that might look for this first pattern. So there's the first term and we're going to show how that term changes using a different, a different color. So there's the second term, there's the third term, fourth term, and finally the fifth term. So let's do that for the next pattern. And there's the second pattern. And now let's do the third pattern. So in each of these three cases, with each successive term, we use a different color to represent the new values added. So once your students have the patterns represented, we're going to have them represent the number of tiles in a table. So for each of the term numbers, they can just determine the number of tiles in each pattern. And then for each pattern, have them rewrite numerically how it was built. So in this first pattern, there are two tiles in the first term. And then we added two more in the second term and added two more in the third, added two more in the fourth, and added two more in the fifth. And so have each of your groups of students do this for each of their patterns. And for those students who finish faster, you can ask them to extend and determine the number of tiles that would exist for the ninth term. So similarly, let's do the same thing for set two. Now you should have seen some similarities between all the patterns in set one, and in the same way, you should see some similarities between all the patterns in set two. And finally, the last pattern in this set. And now, as before, we want our students to complete the table for each of their patterns, first numerically, and then numerically showing how that pattern grows, and extend with nine if they finished a little sooner than some of the other groups. You'll note that the look here is a little bit different, and similarly with the third set, we extend those patterns, create the table, and extend if needed. And finally, with the fourth set, we do the same thing. Each of these sets are slightly different in the way that they're made up, but within each set, they are similar to each other. So once everybody has their sets in the table, have them work with their group to determine the algebraic expression for each of the patterns. So for set one, they should have gotten 2n, 3n, and 4n for those patterns. For set two, they should have gotten n plus 3, n plus 5, and n plus 7 for their patterns. And at this point, we're not giving them any clues as to how they might go about getting those algebraic expressions. For set 3, 4n plus 1, 3n plus 2, and 2n plus 6. And set 4, 2n minus 1, 4n minus 1, and 8n minus 6. So at this point, you may want to have all 12 of the patterns displayed for students to see. 
so far they've only been seeing their own pattern. Now we want them to look and see if they can use these patterns in groups to find more tools to describe the algebraic expressions, and we'll start with set one. Ask students what they notice about the three patterns from set one and how those pattern rules look. Hopefully what they've noticed is that when written out like this, they can readily see that the number of twos in this case is equal to the term number. And the number of twos in this case is the term number, and the number of threes is the term number, and so on. And so patterns of this form are relatively easy to come up with the algebraic expression because we can see using additive principles that this pattern exists. One way to see that is to start by simplifying each of these expressions. So for example, in this first pattern, this can be 2 times 5, 2 times 4, 2 times 3, and so on. And you can readily see that this is just 2 times n in each case. Similarly, for patterns 2 and 3, we can also write them in that form. So writing them in that simplified form confirms that this is, in fact, the proper algebraic expression. Let's do the same thing for sets 2, 3, and 4. Now these sets look a little bit different than our set 1, and so we might have to handle them a little bit differently. You might ask them to see what they notice when they see them all together like this, and see if there's any connections they can make between what's in the table and what we've determined to be as the general term. They may have some difficulty, as in the previous set, there was exactly the right number of twos or threes or fours as the term number. Here it's one less in each case. Perhaps that's something they'll notice. In order to move away from the additive rule of patterning to the more multiplicative one, we have to get to the general pattern rule so that if we wanted the ninth term, for example, we don't have to get the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth, and so on. And one way to do that is to think about how we can rewrite this so it's a little bit easier to write in terms of that algebraic expression. Here the term number is 5, but there is only four ones. Ask students if there's a way that we can change the way this is written in order that there are five ones instead of four. Once they've brainstormed a bit, you might highlight and ask if there is a way they could change the way this four looks. So instead of there being four ones and one four, there are five ones and something else but it still has to equal 8. Hopefully they'll get to the point where they can rewrite that as that 4 as 1 plus 3, and when written in this form, we have 5 1's and 1 3, and so let's make sure we do that for the other patterns in this set and the others. Keep in mind that students may have a little bit more difficulty in this last set because it's a subtraction, so you might need to help those groups a bit more. So we've rewritten that last value in each case. So now in each case, there is the same number of repeated values as the term number for every term in every pattern. And so now ask students to rewrite their expressions in the simpler form like we did over here. This should confirm that regardless of the set and regardless of the pattern, we can now see the algebraic expression come out of our work here. 4 times 5 plus 1 equals 21 is 4n plus 1. 3 times 3 plus 2 equals 11 is 3n plus 2, and so on. And this is regardless of whether we have a plus or a minus in there. One thing that students have difficulty with consistently is getting that constant value of these algebraic expressions. Looking at patterns in this way, might help them find that constant value a little bit easier. To test that out, give them all this pattern and ask them to create the table and find the algebraic expression in this case. So they've shown how their pattern extends. Determined the number of tiles. Written that in terms of how many tiles they've added in each case. And now, to help get the algebraic expression, they've taken this 
repeated 8 and rewritten that as 5 plus 3. And so now each of the fives appears five times or four times or three times, depending on what the term is. And they can simplify that, which gives us a general rule, in this case, of five times n plus three. So in this way, we hope that students will easily come up with a way to develop that algebraic expression, especially that constant term, which sometimes can be a problem for them.